welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. Today, I am playing with my 1966 Fender Mustang with Tom Brantley custom pickups. I'm using the bridge pickup, running into my board, using my Strymon Deco for some crunch. The reverb you're hearing is Valhalla Effects Vintage Verb. It's a really nice plug-in that you can get for not too much money. The amp I'm playing through today is my Mojotone Tweed Pro amp with a Weber Alnico speaker, mic'd up with a Bayer M160 ribbon mic. Now let's learn this spunky little arrangement. Let's go ahead and get our D actually the Tom Petty way. Tom Petty plays his D like this, just if you watch closely. Um, zero, and I'm going to use my middle finger on the two there of the G, ring finger on the three of the B so I can go to back up to get that first fret of the B string. Now you could hit the A string too, it depends on how sloppy I'm feeling, it is, you know, I would consider this punk-ish type song. C, regular old C, G. The humidity changed in North Carolina overnight. It's fall and nothing is in tune anymore. Okay. Now my G, you notice I'm really only worrying about third fret of the low string. I'm gonna block that A string with the fat part of my ring finger and just let these those um, D, G, and B be open to do that main riff. So there you have it. And then I vaguely cop the melody. So think a box riff out of D up here. <laughs> think of that, because I'm going to go D, that fifth fret, jump the octave, uh, seven on the G, G five on the G, seven on the A. Yeah, notice I am doing the the Nile Rodgers, John Frusciante, uh, hitting many strings, only getting the notes I want, which I'm going to put a lesson together on this technique uh, probably next video shoot, because it is interesting and useful. But... Now to get a C, all I'm doing is five and five on the G and the B. No, sorry, the D and the G. And then to get my G, all I'm doing is five and four. That's kind of my main thing. And then I think the second time around, a little bit different, it goes. Same thing here. And then I'm always gonna do those again. And then I start to mess with it. That's not in the song, that was just me playing around. Still hit that fifth fret of the A. Now I'm thinking of pentatonic minor. Out of that position there. So I'm gonna aim for that sixth fret, which is the F. And then yeah, still seven, five, seven, walking it out. And then do the chords again. And then the last one, I hit a big open D, and then I did the old cool unison bend. Just because it's fun. So there I am thinking D blues up here. At the 10th fret, and doing a unison bend. Pointer finger on the 10 of the B string. And then these two lined up behind that 12. You know, you push, keep him the same, push the other guys up get out of it. And then, what did I need here? I needed my C and my G. I found them right there, because there's a C chord here. I was like, oh look, he's right there. 10 and 9 on my D and G. Oh look, 7 and 9, because look, there's a G chord here. Yeah, I, I like that lick. And then we're kind of to the pre-chorus, B-flat power chord, you know, one and three. 
C power chord, F. I love this F, by the way, if you don't use it. It's the best one. You know, instead of doing a full bar, or instead of doing what books usually tell us to do, a lot of the classic rockers and songwriters that I like, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, etc., will do this form. Uh, three, so, you know, it looks a lot like a C chord, starting on the A string. Three, four, two, one. So where are we? So then that is actually a C chord, because here's another C that we have. Out of the cage system. That's where I found that, because I want to go up and I want to get that, get that melody on top. So seven on the A string. Five five. Pinky gets seven and comes off. And then just getting the melody. Seven on the D string. Five, eight, and I go. Yeah, and I use the open string to land it. Because then I'm going to go get, here's a D chord up at the 10th fret, just bar chord shape, but I'm only going to get these pretty little happy sprightly notes here at 11 and 10 on the G and the B. And the song's going to hit B minor. So I'm going to go and get um, 7 and 7, 9 and 9 on the A and D. And there's that little fill. So yeah. Open. Oh, I guess I didn't tell you what that fill was. Sorry. 7 and 7, 9 and 9. Here we go. Sliding from 7 to 9 on the A. Getting that. 7 on the D, open again, oh I forgot it hits that one again, that's that, and then here we go again with our C at the 10 and 9, G, 7 and yeah, 9 and 7, and then there's another C right here at the 5's, 5, 5, 5, five on the, starting on the D string. That's just a chimey G, 0, 3, 3, starting on the G string, and then D. Ta-da! I really like this one because a lot of times I do slow arrangements because, well, for teaching and learning, it's nice to have those spaces and, and gaps between the notes so we can really focus on our um, execution and articulation. But... Um, Boy, it sure is fun to do something peppy and fast. It's just, and it's really fun to play. Well, I hope you like it. Thanks for watching.